My call to ministry was an exciting process for me. It was not something that I expected to happen. Um, when I was a child, I always felt like God was, was urging me to be in some sort of ministry, but never did ordination um, or, or the call to be a deacon uh, come into my mind um, or be something that I realized could happen until I was in college and I was working with my chaplain and she really encouraged me to open myself up to the process that, that um, the process of discernment and that process of, of allowing myself to begin to understand what, what God called me to do. And that was a, cha uh, a time where uh, that change in my life, um, it was a time where I felt, felt um, pushed and felt excited and felt like God was going to do great things with me. I knew I was called to be a deacon as I was going through seminary. Um, I hadn't realized when going into seminary that uh, deacons and elders orders had separated and got really interested in what a deacon is and does. I had friends who wanted to be deacons. And so I explored with Margaret Ann Crane, um, who's a deacon herself and a professor at Garrett, um, and looking at where my gifts lie. And they lie more in a deacon's uh, service than elders. I'm personally, no, I'm not called to lead a church. Um, I'm more than happy to support people who are, but I'm called to be a hospital chaplain and to be able to bring calmness and Christ into situations that uh, really need that, that presence. So if you want to become a deacon, you can um, get a master's degree from a seminary like a Master of Divinity um, or a Master of Music or a Master of um, Christian Education. Um, or you can also um, go a route where you would get a master's um, in a specialized area of ministry um, such as a Master of Social Work or, or something of that nature and then also do um, a program that allows you to complete the basic theological or graduate theological studies that um, are required to be a deacon through a United Methodist Seminary. Um, my advice for anyone who is feeling called to ministry is pray about it, talk to a lot of people about it, and then talk to people who do, do different ministries. Um, Talk to the people who lead churches. Talk to the people who work in food pantries. Talk to those who do Christian ed. Talk to chaplains. Um, all are very viable ministries. Um, don't limit yourself. Most of us are called to be in a parish, but I personally wasn't. And I'm glad I did that exploration. And think about finances. When I told my sponsor I was gonna go into ministry, she said, oh, you're going to be poor. And yeah, that's kind of the truth. Um, think really about um, where you want to go and the finances that can get you there. And there's always that question during ordination of, are you in debt as to embarrass yourself or the church? So just some practical stuff. Ministry is a wonderful thing, but you got to have a life as well. Deacons serve in a variety of different settings. Um, some serve in a local church and others serve beyond the local church in, in a variety of different roles from counselor and, and therapist to um, an administrator at a social service agency or um, an educator in a school setting. I serve as a family therapist in a partial hospitalization program where I provide family therapy to children and adolescents and their families. And the best part of, of being able to, to, um, to do that, to be a deacon in that setting, is that I am providing um, 
a ministry of presence and of hope for those who are struggling and those who might feel disconnected, those who might not have a, a local church where they can feel God's love. Um, I get to carry that outside of the local church and, and help others.